Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. Hello friends. Well, we have been working hard on the yurt. The shell is up. We still have a lot of work to do on the inside. But today I wanted to show you some kind of fast forward through the process of putting it up. Our friend Brett, who came from up north where we were running the school and is now our neighbor and part of our community, helped out. It went so smoothly because of his help. It was awesome. After that, I want to share something with you that I'm pretty excited about and I want your take on it. So, all right, here's the yurt. Okay, my friends, there's a lot more to do on the yurt. We're doing some painting and lots of touch-ups. It's kind of all white inside right now. We want to add a lot of color and just make it a community space for, well, we have kind of a neighborhood community here and a place where people can have a retreat away from technology and get out into a place that feels like nature, but you know isn't totally exposed. We have a little forest school with all the homeschool kids in the area that a neighbor of mine runs. And I think they'll be using it when the weather's pretty powerful. <laughs> so we're pretty excited to see how this evolves into a community resource. Now, when we were running the Forest Monk program, I was a little surprised to find that a lot of people who came to our school had not just technology addiction, but video game addiction, 
specifically. And it led me to reflecting on gaming a lot. It's something that a lot of people from my generation, you know, we grew up with the beginning of gaming, Pac-Man and oh, what was the first Pong? 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 Pong. <laughs> These very first games that came out on the Atari console, consoles. And um, it's been part of our life, but sometimes people in my generation can really look down on gamers. But to me, you know, I also grew up with Dungeons and Dragons and those paper and dice role playing games. And it was a fabulous way to engage the imagination. So for me, I don't see gaming as an evil thing. And I've always thought it's one of those cultural things. You know, it's like a knife. It can be a, a wonderful tool that brings you out into the forest and opens up a whole world of nature through bushcraft skills. Or it can be a weapon that harms somebody else. It's the same with gaming. Gaming, I think, can be something that can be incredibly destructive in a lot of lives. People would come to Rewild U with huge gaming habits and wanting to just get away from it. But I think it also holds some keys to a different state of mind. And what happened for me is in Hawaii, and this often happens with ideas or books, I sat down one day, I started writing, and this book just boom came out of me in about two months. And I just <laughs> wrote and wrote and wrote. And this book was about the concept. It sort of combined the Hindu ideas of Maya, of this world being an illusion, with the simulation hypothesis, the idea that some scientists are throwing around that this could be all a giant simulated reality or video game that we're in. With just <clears throat> the, the thought of giving people a myth and a myth not in the sense of a falsehood but a myth in the old sense of the word a story through which we can look at life differently and this book came out written in the language of myth that combined these ideas and was written specifically for gamers or people that resonated with that idea or people who knew gamers and the idea was, again, seeing it as a myth, but seeing this world as a video game or a game that we are in, and this book being an instruction manual for that game. And of course, in this instruction manual, it's not about making tons of money and getting the best this and this and this. It's about the, the underlying game that's going on underneath all of those distractions. And it's, you know, it's what all of Rewild University, this whole channel is about. So I incorporated that in, wrote it in a language that I hoped would speak to gamers by doing this instruction manual for this game. Kind of like you were in the matrix and you didn't realize it, and then somebody came along and told you, Morpheus came along and told you, and gave you an instruction manual on how to play the game most effectively. So I wrote that book, and I'm thinking of this being the next book that we release, but I want your take on it. I would like to know a couple things, if you're willing to share. A, how many of you consider yourself gamers? And I don't just mean video games, but paper and dice game any game where you take on another role or persona and immerse yourself in another world. So how many of you are gamers? And if you are, or if you know gamers, would this interest you, this idea of taking gaming and not just having it be a, a fun thing or a distraction, but having it be something that could act as a gateway into a new way of living in the world. And of course, as I said, a way that's, that's about developing mental focus. It's about awareness. It's about cultivating compassion and 
and caring and engaging with the world and the people around us in new and positive ways. And finally, if you're not a gamer, <laughs> would you be someone who would <sighs> support this idea, would spread the word, would help me to get this out there? In some ways, I've seen this as a really important demographic because I feel like the gamers that came up to Rewild U tended to be extremely intelligent people who had some really powerful gifts. And I would get to see them step away from the games and get to see their mind applied to new things and was always amazed at what they could accomplish. Do you see gamers as a group of people that could make some really positive change in the world if the games could become something more than just a distraction. The other part of this is that I have the idea of starting another YouTube channel. Of course, we will always keep the Rewild U YouTube channel. This is my family's love and joy, and we love our connection with all of you. But this new one would follow along with the book and would add things to the book other concepts and ideas. I am going to do something probably with this channel, if I do this channel, that might seem a little sacrilegious, and that's that I think I will be filming these inside. And the reason being that I've had a bushcraft video that all this week I've been wanting to put out for you guys, and it's been super windy until today. And I just have not been able to do it because I don't yet have equipment that could hold up to the wind and the conditions that were out there in the woods. So the little cat thing that <laughs> you put around the microphone, just not cutting it under the conditions that we had. This, I wanna be able to put out a video once a week. And I think if I do it in controlled conditions, it will just be easier on the family. These would probably be three to five minute videos once a week. Just really pithy, giving some information, just talking to the camera. If, again, you're a gamer of any kind, do you see yourself checking out that channel, supporting that channel, helping me to spread it and make it into something? All right, my friends, hope you enjoyed seeing that yurt set up and We'll probably see, you'll probably see more of the yurt <laughs> as things go along. And I would value any thoughts or ideas you have about this, this new concept, the book and the YouTube channel that would accompany it. I'm pretty excited about it, but, and I've heard from some of you, but I do want to gauge further interest and just see what you think. All right. Love to you all. And can't wait to talk with you in the comments.